This time for sure. This time for sure. This is a smelt attempt number three. Second time with iron. This time, because I have a sneaking suspicion that the iron ore we were using last time wasn't any good, we went out and used magnets to collect magnetite ore. If you have ever dropped a magnet in a sandbox, it collects a little bit of black sand. That's what we were using. Plus a whole bunch of the rock from the previous video. Alright, so this is the Viking design smelt. And here's Joseph, the designer of said smelt. Can you tell us a little bit about the design? Sure. Uh, basically what we're doing is you've got a chimney. It goes all the way to the ground in there. And then you fill it up with charcoal. You put that air at the bottom where the fire is. And then as it burns down and gets rid of the charcoal, you keep adding layers of charcoal and of ore. We've got a couple of different kinds of ore. This is magnetite, which we got by uh, dragging a magnet around through the forge. That's what these big flakes are. And the sandy stuff is black sand. If you ever drop a magnet in a sandbox, you end up with this uh, sand that sticks to the magnet. And that's just a whole bunch of that. So you can imagine how much sand we went through. Great. Over here, we've got red rock out from the desert. I got a hoping there's some iron in there, but we're really not sure. And then here, we've got what we're is a mixture of black sand and of red sand from uh, actually from the university parking lot. And we're hoping that that is also iron ore. If it isn't, then well, you'll find out. <laughs> we'll see we've got a hair dryer. <laughs> so we have two different sources of air going into the chimney. Absolutely. And then Great. a whole bunch of wood that we were burning before to get the fire going in the first place. And there is the wheelbarrow that's all nasty from the mixture of mud and straw that we use to make the furnace itself. And uh, how do you find out how to make this? Uh, YouTube. Lots YouTube. And lots, lots and lots, lots of YouTube. Great. And Wikipedia and miscellaneous web sources. You said this was this was a Viking design? Yeah. Uh, this is the same kind of design that they've used through the Celtic times, through Viking times. This is how basically all iron was produced in Europe until like the 1400s. And that's when they started to get a lot bigger. You can scale this down and make a really tiny bit of iron, or you can scale it up. And the biggest they ever really got was about 300 kilograms. Wow. Yeah, kind of massive. But uh, there, there are advantages to different sizes. We're really hoping that this one will work. Actually, we might need to add another layer. Okay, this will be good. Okay, there's probably an air pocket in there, so we're going to tap this to make it fall down. Yep, looks like we've got some room in there. Okay, we need some ore, so we're going to get... This is the one from the sand, if you'll remember. I think this full right in the middle there. And then, we're going to cover that up with another layer of ore, of uh, charcoal. And then let's cap it off. And that's basically how it goes. We're going to keep at this for about two and a half, three, four hours. Probably closer to three. Great. And then, how you go? And here we are at um, the Little Dragon, or alternately the Turk Furnace. And this is Joseph, tamping it down. Um, we put in alternating la layers of charcoal and iron ore, like so. We also have... Um, a hair dryer over here, and then on the other end there's another fan. <laughs> Blowing in through two pipes. As you can see, it's quite the fire. I don't think you can see it here on the camera, but there's lots of little sparks flying out too. And they it's almost... They hurt a lot when they land on your arms. They hurt a lot when they land on your arms. This is John, who's come along for the party also. He's our charcoal shoveler. <laughs> we haven't seen any slag come out of the slag hole, which has been kind of surprising for all of us. We were waiting to see rivers of molten lava. We still might. We still might. I might go full time. Kind of like the rivers of lava that come out of Isengard in Fellowship of the Ring. But we haven't seen any yet. We're still waiting. And then uh, if we come in a little closer, we can see that it's actually cracking. And is now belching flames out the side and cracking down. 
So this will be really interesting to see if it falls over and explodes. The charcoal and the ore are put in at a 50-50 by weight ratio. And there's our charcoal. The flames here at the top show that the exhaust gases from beneath are coming up and actually getting burned as they come out. So that's a really good sign too. So Joe's just going to explain the chemical reaction going on. I am the guest speaker. Um, so the reaction that turns the, this ore into, um, into iron actually isn't the heat. So you could get a furnace really, really hot and it wouldn't do anything. What actually does is the carbon monoxide. So as the charcoal burns, it puts off uh, carbon dioxide, but if there's not enough oxygen, it puts off carbon monoxide which is why you never have a charcoal burner inside a house. It'll kill you. Or, like, the fumes from your car. Um, the excess gases coming off the top, like Joseph was saying, are, are good because they show us that the extra gases from here are still burning as they come up, meaning they need more oxygen as they rise, which shows that there's an oxygen deficit in the chamber, which means that it should theoretically be working. Um, whether or not it actually does, we won't know until we take it apart at the end. Right here you'll see we have a, a section of board. That's where we're going to thump whatever, uh, whatever comes out of that and turn it into a piece of, of iron. It'll come out as a giant sponge and we'll squish it. Uh, over on this side you can see the entry hole where you can check and see how things are progressing inside. Alright, we'll go take a look at that. And that is what a 3,000 degree fire looks like. In fact, if we got much closer, we'd melt the camera. So we'll back off. And then if you can see there, right in the middle, there is actually a little crack coming out and flames are belching out the side. Which means that we're starting to see some structural damage. Which is okay because we're almost out of ore. Those flames coming out the side are pretty cool. <laughs> Really digging those. Yep, here we're gonna go watch and s watch the ore go in. The flames spike up. That was the last one. That's all the ore. So we'll just be layering more charcoal on, letting it burn down, and we'll see if we've got a lump of metal in the bottom. Here's hoping. Yep, okay, we'll start this back up when we are a little closer to seeing the metal. All right, so about 10 minutes ago, we put in the last of the ore and we've been letting it burn down. Joseph is now digging out the slag. All that there on the ground is slag. Okay, warning, I'm gonna knock the forge top over that, that side. Warning, he's gonna knock the forge top over to that side. Everybody's watching, go, yeah! Yeah! Awesome. Okay, we're gonna wanna rake that all into one pile. So we'll take a look at all this slag here on the ground. This is the waste byproduct, other minerals, including melted down sand. So you could actually make glass out of this, maybe? Potentially. And it's also very liquidy. And it is also worthless. So we're still waiting for our nice big lump. Oh, there it goes. We were waiting for a nice big lump of iron in here somewhere. And we have faith that it's there. Well, actually, we think we have faith. We don't know if we have faith because you can only have faith in things that are true. Otherwise, it's just... Believing. Unjustified belief. False. Yes. False, False unjustified <laughs> belief. <laughs> <laughs> now, it is still really hot here. If I got much closer, you poor little camera would melt. So I'm not getting much closer. I really appreciate your enthusiasm, Joseph. I try. And then uh, we've also turned the two fans down to about half. Actually, this one we flipped off completely because it doesn't have a halfway setting. And there's Joseph digging around in it. Oh, that's a good sign. Um, we have a heuristic, which is the word of the day. A heuristic is a rule of thumb that, although perhaps not scientifically verified, still seems to be true or seems to work. And the heuristic of the day is that we believe these large amounts of slag from ore that we believe to be quite pure 
is related to the fact that uh, we don't have a lot of iron yet. The exact relationship, we don't know yet, but we think it's related. We're going to come in and see the inside. Okay, notice how it's molten on the inside. Now watch this. If I poke it, see how that kind of sticks? How there's kind of this gumminess there? Yeah. That is the clay turned gummy from the heat. <laughs> So as you can see, the walls of the furnace in there, actually kind of hard to see on the screen, but the walls of the furnace in there are actually orange hot. That means that the clay walls of the furnace are melting. Crazy. I'm going to turn on the door. That's a lot of heat. Okay, and here we've got the world's coolest sparkler. Wait for it. We've put an iron bar inside the fire. It's a pretty hot fire. Little known fact, if you get iron hot enough, it burns. Yep. Which is what those sparklers on the 4th of July actually are. Three, two, one, and... And watch that white hot burning sparkly goodness. Mm-mm. If it was edible, we could eat it. Notice how we're using a wood anvil. There is a good explanation for this, which I do not know. I think it's because we're waiting for a bloom. Now, what is a bloom, you ask? A bloom is what we're expecting to get from this. The hope is that there will form at the bottom of this furnace a kind of spongy, uh, semi... A kind of spongy mass. And then we're going to put it on that wood thing, because it wouldn't be right to put it on a metal thing. We're going to put it on that big old wood stump thing, and then we're going to whack it with a hammer to kind of like uh, bring it together, get rid of air pockets. Uh, make it all into one piece of iron instead of just like... It's like the difference between a cluster of grapes and a grape smoothie. So we're trying to make an iron smoothie instead of just a cluster of iron chunks. And now we're pulling out those other pieces. Oh, that's a big sucker. You know, you can see really clearly there that the clay inside has actually been heating up and melting. You can see some of the, uh, some of the places where it's cracked and then actually... Uh, become really rounded because of the way that it's been melting and uh, that also looks like it's got some slag you can see it kind of poking out on the side there's little bits of slag also that have um, that have caught onto the side of the furnace and then there's the furnace again deep in there you can see the molten walls So what we're doing now is we're beating down the walls till they're at the level of the charcoal and then we just keep burning down the charcoal. Joseph, why did we beat that thing? What? The, the, the pole? The pole? Yeah. Did I get it? Why did you like hammer it? Was it just to make it hooked? Yeah. Gotcha. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Is that all slag in here on the outside? Joseph, or is that the... Some of it's got to be the clay. It's probably sand that was in the clay. That makes sense. So we're wondering if the, if the molten walls of the furnace are actually molten walls of the furnace, or if it's just slag. We know there's some slag stuck to it. It's looking like some of the clay has melted, though. It's looking like it's a combination of the two. It's also looking like if you put a hot coal into the grass, it will instantly burst into flames. And the moment of fruition, we hope, has arrived. This is Joseph. He has his steak, metal steak thingy. He has his hammer. He is pounding a piece of what we are hoping is... <laughs> iron! We hope, we think. Is this iron, Joseph? Is that part of your balloon? Let me check. Nope, mostly no. Uh, okay. Actually, maybe. That no, was. No. Okay, we think we have temporarily been thwarted. We think that that was a ginormous clinker. However, we are deep in there prying out another lump of what is potentially iron. And here it goes. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. He's going in. <laughs> It's like wrestling alligators. <laughs> Except that they're made of metal. 
and they're really hot. Clinkers or stinkers, as Joseph says. Uh, what we're hoping to get out of this furnace is we're hoping to get a large mass that looks something like that. That's a clinker, which is another uh, piece of trace minerals, kind of like the slag. What we're hoping to get out of here is something that looks roughly like that, but it's actually made of iron, so it'll compact and uh, dent like putty when he hit, hits it with a hammer. And we haven't seen that yet. We're still hoping to pry out another piece. And uh, we think we're pulling out another one. We heard an exclamation yeah. of surprise, joy, and general elation from Joseph. We have another thing that looks like a clinker there. But there's another larger chunk that's softer. It's softer. It's not behaving like a clinker. It's behaving like a piece of iron. Dare we say it? Dare we say it? Dare we say it? We dare say it. Oh, there it is. There it that is. Looks just like a bomb. Look at that go. <laughs> All right. Let's test it. Oh! <laughs> That's it, right? It might be. I think that's it. We think that's it. Okay, you got one over here by your foot. You'll notice how it is denting. It's not just shattering like the clinker. Now that might just be because it's molten. We're desperately hoping it's not just because it's molten. But the fact that it's denting seems to make it look like it might be iron. We're hoping. And then there's a little forest fire we're starting. <laughs> and uh, we think That's we have it. a winner! Woohoo! Awesome. Woo! Woo! <laughs> and uh, so it looks like some of these may be clinkers, but we have at least a couple little pieces of iron, as we can tell by the way they're denting and flattening. Now here's the boring part where we would dig through the fire. Our little forest fire that we were starting has also gone out, which is, I guess, probably a good thing. So uh, now we've done about all the burning we want to do. The only question now is about extraction. And actually, we're going to take a look at one of these little guys and see if maybe it's magnetic. Oh, that doesn't look magnetic. That looks glassy. Daring art. Um, let's take another one of those little guys. That we hope... Woo! Okay. There is our friendly little piece of metal that we hope is iron. Ah! Oh, it moved! What? It moved! Check this one. Well, it, since it's red, it won't be magnetic yet. Oh, yeah? Because it's moving. <laughs> I think we won. <laughs> okay, so as we can see here, check this out, check this out. Oh, sorry, my depth perception is funny when I look through a camera. And it, come on, wiggle, wiggle, you dumb thing. Oh, did you catch the wiggle? Did you catch the wiggle? There we go. It's iron. It's ferrous. It's magnetic. It responds to magnetic things close enough. And so we find that the furnace is like a pie crust. It was made only to be broken. Dude, those are iron chunks in there. There's a black one there that is magnetic. This is confirmed, Joseph. Okay, so you see how gooey that is? That is probably slag. But I guess there's a possibility that it's a ginormous chunk of iron. You never know. I'm trying to be optimistic here, guys. Okay, so we have a big old bucket of water, and here we go. Uh-oh, there we go. He gone and done it now. <laughs> this is the kind of smoke cloud that uh, in the Salt Lake Valley your neighbors call the fire department over. In Idaho, I'm not sure what happens. <laughs> in Idaho, they don't do anything. In Idaho, they come over and roast marshmallows. Yeah, for sure. That sounds about right. That was crazy. So we started this adventure by going through rocks and sand looking for ferrous material. And we're going to end this adventure by going through rocks and sand looking for ferrous material. <laughs> Guys, it is iron!
and you can pick these little guys up which proves that even if they might be a tiny bit slaggy they are made of the black metal and then this is a little shred of ore that apparently survived Ooh, look at that guy man that's a lot of slag there at the bottom Chunk. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Look, the fire didn't even extend beyond that outer rim. Yeah. That's still dirt. Yeah. yeah. So, attempt number three. Um, I went out a couple weeks later and looked at the site of the furnace where rain had gotten to it and there were rusty specks, and so apparently we made some iron. Not enough to be useful for anything, so in the end it was kind of a false positive. But, undaunted, we proceed for smelt number four. If you enjoyed the video and want to see if we do eventually make iron, please subscribe below and give us a like if you enjoyed the video.